Hello everyone, this is my fourth ROM review. I just recently switched to Razer Recovery, which so far seems really quick, and it has a nice wipe all button that looks like it does not include the SD card. So we will wipe everything. Wiping cache may take a while on gingerbread. According to this, gingerbread may have a large cache. Anyways, here we go. Update CM 7.0.0 RC2 droid signed. Alright, that's done. Now let's install Titanium Backup 3.7.4. Installing. Done. Hopefully that worked. Reboot. Now it has reboot into Android, reboot, reboot into recovery, and power off as options in Razer Recovery. And I think that was Razer Recovery 2.0.3. I could have just checked, but I didn't. Alright. Looks like it was a minute 33. And on this ROM we don't get the little Android guy. It takes us right into ADW launcher. As opposed to the stock launcher. Okay. So, first things first, we are going to look at the features of the ROM. CyanogenMod is composed, or made up, of a team of developers. Usually one developer maintains a device, and then there are a number of people who will submit changes. That will be committed by Cyanogen himself into the group source, I'm not sure what you'd call it. They've got a GitHub that's open, you can go ahead and download the whole source of CyanogenMod and compile one for your phone. I'm sure there's a tutorial out there. Anyways, we'll go with CyanogenMod settings. You'll notice this is going to be very similar to Ultimate Droid and Liquid Frozen Gingerbread. Or Liquid, I think it's just Liquid Gingerbread now. You can let any, any application be installed on the SD card. You can tell it where to install automatically. Um, adjust the automatic backlight settings. I always do sample interval, change it to two seconds, save some power. There are a few other things. You can edit the custom individual levels depending on how much uh, light the sensor senses. You can change the uh, screen, buttons, and keyboard levels. Screen on and off animation, nice but not really necessary. Input. You can change how many apps appear when you hold the home button. Right now I've only opened one app. Or you can launch a custom application. Let's just open up contacts. Okay, hold it. And nothing at all happened. Anyways, change search button behavior, same type of thing. Haptic feedback tweaks, not really necessary. Uh, with this enabled, you can pause and play music using the camera button when the screen is off. And these are forward and backward with the volume buttons. Interface, you've got the power prompt, so you can choose to reboot or shut down when you hold the power button. Notification power widget, which is really nice. You see right now it starts with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and sound. You can change the color. Nice <laughs> purple. Um, let's do media stuff. Play, pause, and then back and forward. Flashlight. I don't know what else would we want. Sync. And then you can see they all appear and it's scroll, scrollable. Um, CVPCS program, the scrollable part, added to the original. Cyanogen mod just ability to have them there. Now you can scroll so you can have more than six. And you can easily rearrange them. Say, I want media in front of everything else. They will. Well, I'm having a little trouble here, aren't I? It says I'm dragging Bluetooth. There's a little issue. Anyways, now they're in the front. Alright, next we have status bar tweaks. Not really big things. Battery percentage, yay. Um, the render effect, not many people use it. I know for a fact that red or night mode saves battery. Uh, everyone knows that the screen is a huge battery eater, so that'll help. Uh, you've got bounce and glow, edge glow, which also bounces, which is a glitch in a number of ROMs, um, and then just bounce. See how much it bounces. Heavy is kind of ridiculous, as you can see. We've got lock screen, different styles. Um, you can hide the ready arrows, start a custom app so you have a, like a third or a fourth um, slider on the lock screen. 
I always display battery status. I just like to see what it is on the lock screen, even though I will have the battery percentage up there. Um, only display the lock screen controls when it's playing or when there's a wired headset plugged in, so you don't accidentally turn it on and hit the play button if it, as opposed to the always on option. Um, it'll display album art in the middle, which I can really quickly show you. It's a nice little feature. Hopefully I'll find something with... Let's just play through everything. And... There we go. That took a long time. Um, they redid the standard music app to look a bit different. I like it. It's nicer for sure. Okay. Now, it might actually be hiding what? the album art because it's on the rotary lock screen. Oh well. Anyways, it just shows a little small, maybe like one inch by one inch album art. Uh, you can use the menu button to unlock, which is convenient. Gestures on the lock screen to launch specific apps. I don't use those personally. And then you can set how long the screen delays. Like if you turn it off manually, it'll immediately lock. But if it times out, it'll lock five seconds after, so you can quickly turn it back on. Performance options, you can set the uh, governor minimum and maximum frequency and choose to set it on boot. Comcast usage, I don't use that. Always use JIT. I never use surface dithering. It, like it says, improves quality at cost performance. I usually lock both of these in memory because I use them more than anything else. And then you can change the VM heap size, which is just how much memory is allocated to each program you run. Uh... I never mess with the sound options. I mean, you can change how much certain things are lowered when other notifications come in. Get updates is nice. You can register your phone to get updates whenever they're pushed. If you registered for a nightly, it should update you every nightly. If you registered for stable, it should only update you for stable releases like RC3, 4, 5, and then probably the final Cyanogen Mod 7. It does take a while to register, and I don't really want to wait, so we're just going to go back. What else we have? I think that is about it. Um, I usually also do this. Go ahead and enable reporting. I mean, we're going to start with some benchmarks, making sure our kernel is set to 600 megahertz, as that is the speed I run the stock kernel at in every ROM review to keep consistent. And there's set CPU, given permissions. I always change to interactive. Again, it doesn't matter if you're forcing a certain speed. It's going to be at 600 no matter what, but I said it anyways. I always like to turn on airplane mode um, when running these tests. It prevents Linpack from downloading their ads. I don't really think the ads would take up any CPU, but just in case, I'd like to have it disabled. Make sure everything is running as it should. Alright, 8.81 for the first run. Eight point eight four. Now comparing these to the other ROMs I have done, this seems to be going pretty quick. It's definitely speedy. Eight point nine two. I think that might be the fastest I've ever seen at six hundred megahertz. That is that is fast. And another eight point nine. Those are some good runs. All right, now we're gonna run Quadrant. At 600 megahertz, we're going to have to disable airplane mode at the end of it because it needs to submit the scores, but let's let it run. And turn off airplane mode. Wait for 3G to restore as we always have to do. Yes, I would like to proceed. And we got 7.04. Alright, that's still respectable. One feature I forgot to mention, um, the T-Mobile theming engine is built into Cyanogen Mod 7. Choose theme. Right now you can see it's a stockish theme. Then we've got Cyan Bread and Androidian. And you can just hit apply. Wait about 10 seconds, I believe. Or a little less and you've got a complete theme for your phone no rebooting necessary you got all the the blue highlights now you can see everything blue um, if you want a nice theme google search honeybread there's a developer on the xda forums 
It's a very good honeycomb theme called Honey Bread. Now we are going to reboot into Recovery, which you can do very easily. From the power menu, just reboot and then select Recovery. We're going to install RAID Zero's official 800 megahertz kernel. Anyways, we're almost fully booted up here. Now that we are booted up, I'm going to let the phone sit for a minute or two so everything like the SD card gets scanned, all the little boot up time things get finished. I'll be back. Alright, the phone should be running pretty smoothly now. Let's go set it to 800 megahertz. And run set C. Nope, that's what I just ran. Go to airplane mode, then run Limpack. Go. If I remember correctly, the average is between 11.4 and 11.6 for every ROM I've done up until this point. Looks like we had 11.3, which is below the standard. That's disappointing. Second run gives us 11.6. Sometimes the first run is just off. I don't know why. It happens on a lot of ROMs. So usually it's the third and fourth ROM that are the speeds you're going to see the most, 11.61, definitely in the upper end of what I've seen. And 11.59, did not mean to run it a fifth time, I'm not going to let you see the score, ha. Huh? And I just did something weird to ADW launcher, I don't use it normally, I'm not going to try and find out what it did. Let's run the full benchmark. Nine ten. That was ridiculously close. Pat on the back to myself. Okay. Really quickly, I'm just going to show you these additional settings. Um, SMS split, and you can split counter, so it says one out of two, two out of two, or one out of three, two out of three, three out of three. Uh, determine where you save attachments. Notification settings. Vibrate pattern. You can do a custom one. Um, you can choose whether or not enter should send the message. Custom user agent, really don't change that ever. I don't know why. You would, but if you want to, feel free. Um, sometimes if you're in a thread, you'll notice if you push back, it'll go to the home screen instead of the main MMS screen. This will make it always go back to the MMS screen. I always have this enabled. Um, black background, always show the character count, which I usually have. Uh, you can change size of the messages. This is kind of nice. Let's say... I want straight across to say here. I give a lot of rides to people, and if I don't always want to type out the word here, I can just enable that. Now I can just swipe across. I have to swipe across the main screen, don't I? And it says here. I can do it again. Here, 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 here. Nice feature. All right, I think that's about everything I've got for Cyanogen Mod uh, 7 RC2. Anyways, we're going to go feature-wise. It has a little bit less than some of the other ROMs that are based off of it, so I'm going to have to give it around a 7.5 probably, just because there are more feature-rich ROMs out there, even though this is the base for a lot of them. As far as smoothness goes, I don't like ADW Launcher. It doesn't feel near as crisp, even at 800 megahertz as Launcher Pro, or even Black Droid's modified Launcher 3 for gingerbread. Uh, scrolling through the apps list doesn't look good at all. It's very glitchy. That's just because you have a transparent background. So it's your choice if you want to replace the ADW Launcher. For benchmarks, it seemed it seemed on the high end, so let's go with another 7.5, actually. And then, uh, for theming, this is the first ROM to have the T-Mobile theming engine, and it comes with three built-in themes. The only ROM that gets beat by this for theming is my UI, which has ridiculous theming options. Check that out if you want to. Check the video I have of that, actually. But I'm going to give this an 8 for theming, because it's very easy to do. And overall, for this ROM, we are going to give it... 8.5 out of 10. Cyanogen Mod has very few bugs. It has a giant team working on it. it. has an individual developer for each phone. For the droid, it's CVPCS, who has just fantastic work. He had the Sapphire ROM, but left it to work on the Cyanogen Mod team. So you can always expect quick new ports from Cyanogen Mod and expect reliable ports from Cyanogen Mod. So 8.5 out of 10 for this ROM. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.